think it's no secret that uh, since our inception, Rooney's been very much a set piece heavy team. We love our malls, we love our scrums. Another week and another episode of MLR Mic Check. This week I'm with Rugby United's Nate Brakely. Nate, what's up? Welcome to the show. Thanks, excited to be here. This past off season, Rooney made some huge acquisitions, but not only that, re-signed some of your core guys and you're heading in to a huge weekend. I'm wondering if we can start with a scouting report of some of the new faces, but some of the guys who are returning who are high impact players. We're pretty excited to get the kind of the core of our team back, especially a lot of New York guys. Um, so Butcher, obviously guys like Chris Matina, um, Robbie Romescu, kind of local boys that have been on the scene for a while. Um, I think just add a lot of kind of local flavor and, and local um, kind of grit that we as New Yorkers pride ourselves on. Um, so I think it's great to have a lot of those guys back. Um, and then in terms of in terms of new boys, uh, obviously Andy Ellis being the big signing, um, fantastic to have him around. He's been such a good uh, kind of leader and obviously the, the breadth of experience that he's had um, invaluable as far as teaching the other boys um, a lot of what it means to be a professional rugby player. So that's been great. Um, we obviously have Foden back for another year. Um, so thrilled to have him again. Um, he, he, you know, he's another just old head that has kind of seen and done it all. And so it's really good to have that perspective around. Um, it's great. Um, and then a whole new host of new guys as well that we're still kind of trying to figure out who we are as a team. Um, but we've definitely shown bits and pieces of, of great flair. One and one heading into a bye week. What does a bye week look like for your team? Give me the ins and outs. Are you guys <laughs> hanging out together? How much practice is happening? What does it look like? Bye week, um, at week after week two is a little bit odd, um, but we have had obviously a bit of, bit of preseason that we're trying to shake off as well. And so it, it is a good chance to reset um, a little bit more time to scout the, scout the uh, Atlanta team that we're playing coming up this week. Uh, but yeah, you definitely want to unwind as well. We're somewhat limited by COVID, but you know, the boys are, are happy to put their feet up and enjoy each other's company and, and just spend a bit of time uh, not doing rugby related things. Um, so it's, it honestly is, is really low key um, because again, with COVID, we can't do too much. We need to play it safe. Uh, but we had a, a bit of fitness on the, on the field, a bit of review, a bit, a little preview, um, but otherwise just, just good to put the feet up for a bit. Who's the guy who's sending texts to the group chat, trying to get everyone together and hang out? Who is that guy? <laughs> Almost all the boys already live together. Um, and so it's, it's basically go to the next door in the apartment block um, and see what's going on there. Um, I do not live with them. And so I, I honestly couldn't tell you who the instigator is over there. Um, but I, I imagine that Will Leonard is probably in the thick of it. All right, let's look ahead to your big match this weekend against Atlanta on CBS Sports Network. Atlanta is two and one heading into the weekend. How do you feel like Rooney matches up? I think it's going to be a really exciting matchup. Um, they obviously had a fantastic game against San Diego this past weekend that we were all watching. Um, so it's pretty clear that they're starting to click as a team, um, which is an exciting challenge for us, uh, is that we have a chance to bounce back in a big way and, and, put, and play a statement game against them. Um, obviously, we didn't execute the way we wanted to against New Orleans, um, but there were flashes of what we think we're trying to bring to this league, um, and we're hoping to show more of that against Atlanta. Um, they obviously play a very clean game. Um, they wait for their opportunity and strike very hard, um, so we're going to have to try our hardest not to give them those opportunities. What would you say that Atlanta can expect from you all? What should they anticipate you bringing and the you know, as far as energy goes, as far as how you feel like you can beat this team? I think it's no secret that uh, since our inception, Rooney's been very much a set piece heavy team. We love our malls. We love our scrums. Um, so they know that's coming. Um, and when we played them last year, uh, we ended up winning thanks to a uh, chip kick by Butcher. So nothing's out of, out of the question here, I guess. East Coast guy, Born in Massachusetts, co-captain at Dartmouth. Now you're playing for Rooney. I think it's so special. I love that you are, you know, in the area that you grew up. And I'm wondering, you know, you mentioned New York Grit earlier. What does New York Tough, New York Grit mean to you? So we talk about this a lot. And I think a big part of it is that New York is resilient um, and New Yorkers hustle. And that you talk to anybody that's in the city, um, you know, they've been definitely been knocked down a time or two, but they keep keep going. Um, and 
everybody has, you know, a side hustle, has something else going on. And you talk to guys that have played rugby in the area for a while, they're on public transit for an hour to get to a field in Randall's Island. Like you really got to commit to it and you really got to want it. But as a result, the boys that do turn up are that much more dedicated to the sport and to their teammates. Um, and so I think a lot of that grit and a lot of that hustle um, are, the, are the kind of the themes that we want to bring to our team. Do you guys talk about that? Is that a conversation that you all have as you get some new faces in, but you also have some of your core guys, as you mentioned, do you talk about the fact that it is a little grittier in New York and that you guys play with this different kind of edge that you can't find anywhere else? Uh, yeah. I mean, whether, whether or not they know it, when they sign up, they figure out pretty quick that things are a little bit grittier here. Um, I, I, th I think it's super important to talk about those things as a team. You have a bunch of guys coming from a bunch of different backgrounds from all over the world, different levels of experience. And so if you just turn up and start playing rugby as a bunch of individuals, you aren't going to get very far. You do need uh, kind of a unifying ethos that's going to carry you through the season, especially um, kind of a grind of a season like we have here with a lot of straight games. Um, and so it's important that we have something that we can go back fall back on as a team um, if things are going poorly or if they're even going well it's important that we kind of keep uh, our eyes on why they're going well and again having that thematic um, side to things definitely helps solve it you don't really get an off season not only do you play rugby full-time but you are also a senior data analyst at compass What's the balance like? Is there any? Balance in that I spend half my time doing rugby and half my time doing work and no time doing anything else. Um, it's, uh, it's all I've ever known. Um, I've never, when I started playing rugby um, after college, there was no professional league. So it was just playing amateur rugby, which meant, of course, I was working a full-time job. And then all this professional stuff has kind of crept on instead of coming all at once. And so I basically had the opportunity to just keep finding more ways to make a little bit more rugby work. And now I'm at the point where um, it is, uh, it is a lot of both. Uh, but I, I, I enjoyed a lot. I think that if I was doing rugby all the time, I'd go crazy and I'd end up hating it. Um, and so this is a good way to, to stay balanced and, you know, stay entertained in, in both facets of life. When your coworkers find out what you do for the other half of your living, what do they think? They're probably confused more than anything, like wh why I would do, you know, do all of this at once. Um, and, you know, I, I think they think it's pretty cool, but I also don't like everybody has something going on. And so it's I'm not sure that they necessarily understand the scope of what I commit to. So as far as the rest of your teammates, do you know about what they, they do? I know that not everybody's as busy as you are in working multiple jobs, but are there other guys who are putting in the work like you? Yeah, so there's a handful of guys. Um, so Anthony Perry, Robbie Romescu, both work full-time jobs as well. Um, and so, you know, at the end of the day, that's honestly, I think it's great. I think it adds a lot of value and color to a team um, to have guys that are really grinding like that, that it just um, makes it that much more special when you are playing rugby and you look forward to it that much more. Um, and I think that if anything, you know, you see all these guys that do make it work kind of tells you that it, it doesn't have to be a choice one or the other. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it definitely keeps you busy and definitely uh, leads to some early mornings and late nights, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Something else you mentioned that is really important is the pathway. You mentioned the word pathway. And when you were in college and then after no direct pipeline to play major league rugby, there, there, you know, that, that wasn't in existence. And now we do have the MLR collegiate draft, which is a direct pipeline for American born players, for guys who are playing in college here in the United States. When you heard about this, when you found out that this was going to be a direct way for guys to get into major league rugby, what went through your mind? I think it's great. I think that it's been for far too long. It's been, you need to go, you know, play amateur club rugby. And maybe if you're at the right club at the right time and the right person sees you, then you get selected. And so you have a lot of phenomenal athletes that just kind of disappear into their regional club scene. And so this is a great way for the top players in college rugby to uh, join a team. And, you know, everybody, no, there's not a lot of illusions about the, you know, the money in MLR. None of these guys are going to come out of college and, and make it, like any kind of money. 
Um, but the fact that they can make a living doing it just opens up the door to them to, even if it is for just a few years, have that experience as a professional athlete, uh, which I think is great for rugby is, um, yeah, there's this, this great tradition of men's club rugby and kind of building community and friendships through that, which is continues to go on. And I think is great, but for the boys that really want to commit to it, this is a great way to be able to do it for a year or two. And if, it works out, keep going. Or if not, then you, you know, go to the club scene and, and get a nine to five. Coming into 2021, I'm wondering if there was a message that not only your team wanted to send to each other, but also just send to the rest of the league when it came to this season and what everyone could expect from New York. For New York, we're really trying to um, build something that's distinctly New York here. We're really trying to um, build a style of rugby and a team culture and a team image that is unique to New York. Um, we aren't trying to be a team of mercenaries that show up for a year and disappear. Um, we really want to build something that has some longevity to it and will be around in, in 10 years and 20 years and really be a founding member of this MLR. It's time for some bonus points. Are you ready? Right, let's do it. Your favorite pie in New York City. Oh, as in pizza. Oh, you're talking New York language. Uh, Jay's Pizza on uh, 7th and 16th. And what do you put on your pizza? What's the most popular topping? Uh, I'm a big Hawaiian pizza guy. I like pineapple on my pizza. Controversial. We buried Evidently. the lead here. Evidently. I don't know what, I don't know why anyone would be upset about that. It's delicious. I mean, I agree, but I don't, I don't think we're in the majority of people who are accepted in the pizza world right now. <laughs> okay. How about this? So I read you got cut from your high school baseball team. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So you got cut from your high school baseball team. Do you still watch baseball? Do you still root for anybody? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm. A, uh, so I don't watch that much baseball, but I'm definitely a Red Sox fan. An athlete that you would trade places with for a day. Who is it and what would you do? I've never had this question before. Maybe like an F1 driver, because that's something that I will never have the opportunity to have anything near. Um, so let's go with that. Provided so, that I, I get some of his driving skill as well. Uh, okay, driving skill and the need for speed. <laughs> is that what I'm hearing? I Well, just driving a fast car around a track sounds pretty cool. So let's go with that. Great choice. I love that. What about the teammate who keeps you on your toes the most? Let's go with Cara Pryor. He's a new guy and he's definitely a wild card. You have played a lot of rugby in your very young life so far. What's the most memorable match that you've played in? I'll give you two, I guess. I say my, uh, my first cap for USA, um, which was against Canada in Austin, Texas in 2016. Um, and then my first World Cup match, uh, which was against uh, France this past World Cup, which were both really cool. So I always find this question intrusive, but interesting, because I know that to maintain your bodies, but also, you know, be able to kind of carry yourselves, you have to eat a lot. So I'm wondering if you want to share how many calories you eat in a day and how you consume those. I couldn't tell you a number. Uh, but I can give you, I give you a fun fact here, um, is I actually eat vegetarian, uh, Monday to Friday. Um, so it's a lot of calories from like, uh, pasta and eggs and lentils and sweet potatoes and, you know, veg substitutes. That's an amazing fun fact. So then what happens Saturday, Sunday? Whatever I want, baby. Whatever you want. Well, that leads me into my next one. That's a perfect segue. What is the cheat meal? What's the thing when you're like, I need a steak. I need something greasy. What's your go-to? My favorite meat meal is bratwurst. Uh, and my favorite, like, I'm going to smash some calories is pints of Ben and Jerry's. Oh, that's so good. That's so, so good. You studied... Mechanical engineering at Dartmouth, where you won two national championships. You got your master's in engineering at Cambridge. So I want to know what's the best idea you've ever come up with? Something that you want to patent and you've kept inside or you've tried to patent before? Because I know that you've had an idea like that. Well, I can't tell you that because it's not patented yet. Um, 
I, uh, if, I if I had an idea that was going to change the world, I would have started that business already. Um, actually, my mother tells me all the time that, well, one, she has a lot of great ideas that she tells me that she's disappointed I haven't brought to market yet. But then she also tells me that she's disappointed that I have yet to invent the next Facebook or Instagram or something. So um, we'll just say I'm disappointing in that regard. Pre-game rituals, do you have any? I do not. Um, I, this may be, uh, I try to be anti-superstitious um, and not have routines like that, that I then overthink, which may be a routine in itself. So you tell me, but I don't have any pre-game routine. Okay. What about when will you grow your hair back long? <laughs> yeah, you didn't know who you're getting on this call, did you? Um, it was, uh, I played two games with it and both times, three different times during the game, I was taping it to the side of my head. So it stopped falling in my eyes. And I said, the heck with this, um, we're, we're done with this. Um, and so I shaved it all off. Um, it was a good look. You could pull it, it off. It was a good, it was a good look. It was very good for photos. It was very bad for performance. Um, so all my teammates are likewise upset with me for ruining that whole look. There's so much information on you, um, about you on the internet. But I want to know one thing about you that I cannot find on the internet. I don't think this is on the internet. Um, I can unicycle. I am super grateful for your time. I know it's a big week for you. So thank you for hanging out with me and sharing a little bit into who you are and how you uh, go about life. Yeah, of course.